He was so lazy. Lazy. Okay, okay. Let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. It's probably something totally stupid and simple to solve, you know. But since I'm an expert, you know, the only this, this, one... It, I think this is the first... This is the most sculpting like Martin's done for a while on his own, isn't it? <laughs> I think it is, isn't it? It's like, I have not done no personal work for yeah, ages. Yeah, I've done nothing personal. Uh, last so time. he's happy. He's happy as Larry is. He's okay, fine. I think, that I, can, I think we'll uh, close the solution just a second. I think like we'll really close the solution. <laughs> and I hope that others can see. Like, it will appear in like few seconds. I, I, ju I, yeah. I just know if we have lost all the audience, uh, it has dropped. <laughs> It yeah, everyone it, dropped. Yeah. Yeah. It has Except dropped significantly, <laughs> but uh, I hope they'll be back. Okay, <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, let's let's wait for like two, three minutes, uh, uh, and to those eight who are here, <laughs> please. Thank you. <laughs> please, Thank you. please inform your friends that we're back. Uh, so uh, <laughs> please uh, share this James on your show, on your yeah. profile. Uh, well, normally I scare them all off, so this is a good. The fact that there was an audience was, was a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. You're the reason why they all ran away. Actually, it was me, you know, and my <laughs> non-stop talking, you know. So, uh, yeah. Well, we we have like ten guys here, so I think we can slowly continue, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll start inviting others, you know. Right. Okay, so the good thing is that all it's all recorded, so Okay. Yeah. Wait, it's saving. Are you guys seeing my screen? Well yeah yeah it's uh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah okay. seen it. It's streaming. I think the great the best thing about Martin's setup is he um like actually Brett's the same. They don't use um a, a custom UI. So it's actually easier for people to follow what they're doing. Same story um, here, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I use a custom UI, so I've got everything laid out. It's quicker, but then if you're showing people what's going on, then it can be difficult if you're showing a feature off uh, and people just can't find it because, let's face it, a lot of the time it's buried in the ZBrush UI. Um, well, uh, this thing you might recognize it's it's i think familiar yeah it's, it's an alien <laughs> well, right <laughs> yeah it's an alien <laughs> it's from that franchise uh well yeah I, I started sculpting this thing from a sphere um somewhere this afternoon in between f waiting for feedback from a client uh like the big difference between me uh and james uh as sculptors is that i um i sculpt pretty fast uh and i hate to work on long projects uh, sometimes for customers that isn't very good, but um, yeah, that's <clears throat> how I roll. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, for instance, like if I give an example of a sculpt, like, let's see if this comes through. Yeah, I can be fast with mirror and weld. <laughs> <laughs> Cheating, well, Marco. Cheating. Well, yeah, something like this, uh, and and most <laughs> of the things in my portfolio. Wait, let's open it up. Like most of the stuff in my portfolio, those are pieces that I only try to work on one, two days, and then it's done for me. Because mm. so, uh, everything that you find online is uh, ninety-nine percent personal work. Uh, I'm not always happy on showing client work because you're still executing another person's vision and um, I'm more happy doing my own stuff right. and trying my own style. Yeah, uh, I, I can I can relate to that of course. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's something that I'm always fighting with as well, you know, when doing stuff for clients uh, um, but yeah. Well, yeah, and something like this, like, uh, my brain works in a kind of a way like um, I conceptualize the concept in my head. And this can take a few days until I'm, like, happy and I'm not drawing anything on paper. And I just pop into ZBrush and for this thing, like, I had this idea, like, 
I wanted to do something with four arms. I wanted to call it uh, the sisters. So I wanted to do also something with a mutated skull. So when I start sculpting, it's very simple. I just found two base meshes because, like I said, I can sculpt the skull a thousand times again and again, but if it can save you uh, time in the creative process, I tend to use like little assets to, to help me speed up my uh, um, production thing. And in this case, like I just start sculpting with the sphere and I by simply masking off parts, extracting those parts, and then go in with, uh, for instance, wait, let's quickly drop down my Cintiq. And what I do then is I just use uh, the clay buildup brush with a round alpha, not the standard square one, because I prefer to work with the round one because it's like softer in the buildup. And then once something is a polymesh 3D, like this thing, come on. Great auto save. <laughs> I thought it auto saved like three seconds ago. Yeah, but that's also my problem because I have my auto save set to four minutes because I've <laughs> too many projects during my lifetime. Yes, haven't we all? And then it's just very simple, like blocking in shapes with. Why is sculptures not working? Tell me, James, why is this not working? Have you got subdivisions on? No. Have you got something hidden? Yes. Yes. But what was it? I don't know. No. Um. <laughs> why, okay. why is it not working? Um. Do, do a solo on it, and just uh. There's nothing. Um, with turn this. the um polyframe on. Uh, yeah, you've been using it on it, so... Yeah. Oh, it's hidden. Yeah, the layer is hidden, but... It, it, the, the layer, but that shouldn't, that shouldn't it affect... Shouldn't it shouldn't be affected. Uh, Wait, let's quickly try something else. Great. I had this, every every now and then, yeah, I have this problem as well. And you just have a mental block. Um, Especially during live streaming. The, this is... Yeah, this, this is, is someone, so professional. Well, this, exactly, this is someone that's been using the software for nine years. So oh, like just it. rub it into my face again. But I've seen, no, but I, I mean, I've seen this happen to Michael Pavlovich as well. You know, like. <laughs> so. Well, and then, although and then, not Joseph Drust, uh, I must admit. Oh, he's a smart. Yeah. Guy. Just to let you into a secret, I think I've told Joseph this, but like whenever ZBrush goes wrong, I see his face laughing at me. <laughs> I've <t> just <laughs> sort of really mockingly. Well, he's, um, he's a robot anyway, so. <laughs> uh, but Martin, like your personal work, then uh, brings you client jobs, right? Yeah, like that's that's uh, something that I decided, like um, let's say five six years ago, to go more into a dark direction with my personal work to attract mm -hmm. those possible clients um, and it works. that are. Yeah, it works. Uh, well, it doesn't work all the time, like. <laughs> Sometimes people approach you to do some cute furry stuff, and then you're like wondering, like, did you check my portfolio? But, but I, I don't say no to a sculpting job. Like any job that I can sculpt on uh, is is good for me, because like like I said, I also did um, do do glass work, like um, vases and and bottles, but in special shapes, and I also design them like in ZBrush. So as long as the projects interesting for me sculpture wise like chances are big I will take it on so let's see if the other one opens so after a lot of great sculpting it says let's see This brush has auto masking activated and can. You've got a mask on somewhere, or have you got mask. back face? Have you got back face mask switched on? 
Yeah, Thank you. Goes. There you go. It happens all the time with me, but I have that on my custom UI. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you for <laughs> telling me. <laughs> so it's 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 very simple. Like I just skip through the sub tools, build up shapes, try to do, discover what I want to go for, extracting things, and to add other shapes and to keep the polygon count down. I just use an insert brush and I just choose a sphere. And the good thing is like one as long as you're on sculptor's pro mode, um, you have no subdivisions so you can easily drag those things in. And then I just go to split a mast points, have a new sub tool, and from there on I can start modify these spheres roughly, quickly. It's all about shapes, you know, discovering like where I want to go to. Yeah. Should do something about this other saving. Yeah, wow, that four minutes really flew. <laughs> <laughs> Especially because everything. <laughs> okay. And then again, sculptor's modes. Make sure you have extra geometry in there. And you can start dragging, modifying it a bit more. And this actually goes on, on and on. So the same thing for lower body. Drag in the sphere. Split the unmask, get a new sub tool. And it's pretty boring, but that's how I work. And then you go like step by step. And you can see like, in this case, I wanted some female legs. So I think I uploaded the base mesh that's already in ZBrush. I cut off uh, the bottom legs and insert them. And like the arms, they're just started from spheres or um, cylinders dragged out. And when you want to duplicate something, like it's super easy. <laughs> These he he uh, handless arms. <laughs> yeah, they're not people. Yeah. Like that, that it's called book. concepting, guys. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm watching those sm the sm the short ones, like in the middle, t touching the boobs, yeah. like from this angle. Uh, anyway, uh, so. Yeah, I, I, that's why I said earlier about your work. Like, uh, you don't go into action poses, you know. Like, you're, these are more like uh, uh, watching some, uh, 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 you know, like uh, church uh, uh, visuals, you know, from medieval ages, you know. Yeah, yeah. Very, very yeah. iconic things. Yeah, that's that's most of the times when I do, like, let's say, the on my personal work, I try to envision, like, um, ancient beings like the old things um and and something that might strike fear in you mm -hmm. without chasing you or scaring you mm -hmm. like a strong visual thing strong silhouette a presence like something yeah bigger than than you've ever seen or felt before or something that evokes a kind of an emotion mm -hmm. without being like boo in your face yeah, you know yeah, yeah for, for example uh the faces the the faces of those I call them orcish vampires of yours. Uh, <laughs> are kind of like uh, they're like pure evil, you know. <laughs> they're like uh, really e evil, you know. So uh, and uh, while this uh, this here, this is more like some kind of um, half god thing, demons mm. kind of character, yeah, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, so like th th these orcish vampires are kind of in service of of these guys, you know, that uh, you're modeling now. So <laughs> they're like the these guys with boobs, boobs. <laughs> with evil boobs. Yeah. So this is a bit further. Like oh, just a second. Uh, in the middle of the boobs, you know, and a, a, a bit up, it looks like uh, uh, what was the name of this cute little gremlin? Do you see this Giz face? <laughs> it does look Gizmo. like Gizmo, doesn't yeah. it? Something between Gizmo and E.T. 
that's definitely subconscious. I've never noticed yeah. this. Wow, before. that is so. Yeah, is I'm, crazy. I'm I'm a huge uh, Gremlins fan, by the way. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's freaky that you see such. You things. just bought a Gremlin collectible, didn't you, when you were making this? Uh, yeah, roughly. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. <laughs> And it just goes on and on, step by step. And and the good thing, like having all those separate subtools, is that you can uh, play with shapes without uh, destroying the rest. So when you're looking at silhouette, like I can just select shoulders, right? If it's not auto saving, kids, it's very important to auto save when you work on professional projects. <laughs> How did you come up with uh, your uh, palette of colors? You know, some some, st some things are like really repeating a lot uh, in your works. Like, uh, uh, of course, I, I remember I've seen this gold thing. Uh, you know, like these elements uh, of gold, and then there's black and red. Uh, all, all 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 of them a bit dark. Uh, what was um, the inspiration for this? Is was this just some kind of uh, thing that came up, or? I think I think uh, it it came up four or five years ago uh, when I was designing and and the thing with the red and the black is they're like primal colors. When you see those things like yeah, black is darkness, red is anger, and is 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 like uh, hate. And 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 I don't yeah. When I see red, I don't think oh love, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. I think blood and everything. And by adding the gold colors, you're adding something ancient, something something with a culture. And that's also something that I always try to do when I design my creatures. Like, I want to give a kind of a backstory in there. Like, like they've been there and they've seen things. And 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 um, like even even when I'm sculpting, like any every time again and again, like there's like little story running in the back of my head, like. Where does this guy come from? Where does he live? Um, who does he serves? And 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 is he from this planet or is he from somewhere else? Or is he like in a parallel universe? Like those are all the things that just go around in my head. And like also getting a lot of inspiration from uh, medieval paintings like um, Bosch or or like mm. when when you go to church and you see like real old school 15th century paintings they're like which you don't do a lot i guess no no which you don't do a lot but <laughs> i don't let him in the church <laughs> <laughs> i've been in a church once and close the gate martin I kicked him out yeah <laughs> and um and and yeah the thing what you see there is like that's pure hor um horror in my eyes like if if you put one of those old creatures like those old designs with mm -hmm. the teeth on the belly and and the triple noses and 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 like that's the shit that scares you well, at night isn't that amazing you know when you visit like uh, the old cathedrals we have one in, in zagreb like a uh, pretty big one it's not so old uh, it's neo-gothic but uh, when you enter inside you know like there, there are some like horrifying uh, visuals there you know like mm. I mean, you're not sure if this was supposed to be like a house of God or someone else's mm. house, you know, because it's uh, a lot of uh, skulls, uh, demons yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. And I, I guess like it's probably done because, you know, uh, in medieval ages you have people living in mountains or, or woods or whatever. And when they would come to some like center, you know, of, uh, of religion, you know, and, you know, you see this church going way up in the air like for 150 meters you know you have to become a believer you know and when mm. you when you when you enter inside uh, you know it's more like we'll scare him to believe so, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah so scare tactics <laughs> yeah well yeah and, and and let's say those are some of the things that are in the back of my mind when I design things but also like what I always say I grew up in the 80s I'm mm -hmm. a kid of that generation I saw all the wrong movies at the wrong age mm -hmm. um, and that f fucked up my brain kinda in a good way <laughs> because I, I can now use it to make all these these like fantastical creatures yeah uh, tell me about this, uh, uh, for example, if we uh, uh, watch uh, uh, her belly on the left and right, like uh, these repetitive elements, uh, so is, is this some kind of insert brush? Uh, because I see a lot of it was done manually, but then I see this a bit cleaner thing uh, going on, like uh, like some kind of a spine thing. Uh. Well, it's a trick, and I'll tell you <laughs> what I do. <laughs> 
Well, okay, like, we don't want anyone to copy you later on, so you don't have to. You don't have to say it, but no, no, no. It's it's a very simple trick that I came by uh, um, by accident. Like all these little lines, they're done by hand, right? You mm -hmm. can see like they're like more organic, mm -hmm. but like these things, they're actually uh, tubings, and when you use the tree tube like i don't want to see a lot of tubes tomorrow on uh, youtube that's the first thing oh, this be the Facebook. first thing i do tomorrow. yeah probably <laughs> you would Just to goad you <laughs> so let's first see that we don't have any subdivisions and oh, let's undo and let's do it on the legs so you just draw the tubes decide mm -hmm. how big they are right mm -hmm. Then what I do is I split them off, split on most. Use move brush, or first use move in general to drag them in a tiny bit. Make sure that the edges go in. Well, and you can play with it, right? Mm -hmm. So, so you can modify the shape. Give it something more special, and then you, the only thing that you have to do is like divide it a few times, mm -hmm. and then here's the trick: like you use the inflate brush, mm -hmm. high C setting, uh, small draw size, and mm -hmm. you just draw those lines on it, and that's mm -hmm. it. Like that's how you make yeah, those yeah. tubes. And this this really makes a difference. This this thing you did. Uh, I guess you could do the same with the uh, Z modeler and then uh, do some kind of extrusion along mm. the uh, poly loop or, or something like that and then smooth it again, maybe. But Yeah, but it, I think it will take up too much time. And like yeah, what yeah. I also do wh when I'm sculpting, like now I'm using the inflate brush, but on, on most of the sculpts that I do, like at least 30% uh, uh, is done with inflate. Like mm -hmm. I go over all my edges with the inflate with a harder setting. Come on. Just going to adjust my autosave quickly. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Somebody tell a joke, please. Uh, I'm all out, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> my preference, quick save. Up again. Now I can talk for an hour. And then I go over all the edges. And it's even the same thing that I was doing on this sculpt. Where? Like, where? To raise all these edges, mm -hmm. like, at first, oh, edit undo. Just go over the edges to raise them, right? And then you smooth on the inside. Mm -hmm. And then you get these different planes and these different steps mm -hmm. while you're sculpting. And the trick is to do it very loosely, like, okay, you follow the shape, right? But you just apply the same pressure. And you just smooth it out on the inside. And the great thing is, if you do this on, on let's say, things that you want to build for prints, you can amp up certain edges and ridges. When they print out, they're, like, uh, more defined mm -hmm. uh, during the print. For, for Guys, for for three D printing, uh, it is good to ex exaggerate some yeah. details, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's good to ex exaggerate some details. And uh, if I open up my art station quickly, like on this project, this is all painted. Oh, this up. is your the most recent three D print. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so this was a, a little project that I did. Uh, uh, yeah, for myself to figure out, like, I had an idea to do something with a shrunken head and then, like, okay, let's intertwine it to a story, so let's add some things uh, from Van Helsing in there, and let's make a little shrunken vampire head. And, like, this thing was sculpted in roughly four or five hours, so it's 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 a very, fairly simple sculpt. But if you look close on uh, this image, hmm, can't go any closer. Martin, would you be able to be so fast with the, with a client project as you are with your uh, own project? I mean, could you really do something like this uh, based on a on a sketch uh, of a client in, in in four hours? 
Yeah, um, I, I, I've done it in the past and <clears throat> to be honest, it fucked me over a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Because they thought uh, they they got uh, a new present for Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, like they expected that thing every time. But like most of the times when you do the first try for a concept, like that goes out fast. And then they start tweaking and, and, and like modifying and doing all the little things. And then it's, yeah, then the whole thing slows down because you don't see any big changes yeah. anymore. Mm. So oh, shit! Now I see another face below the nostril, like two eyes <laughs> and and a little nose, like a, like a little bat. Did you put a little bat face uh, below the uh, below his yeah. nostril? Oh no, no, yeah, okay. So okay, when I'm looking at it now, I also see it. <laughs> it even has ears, <laughs> eyes, and, and a little nostril. Shit, man, I'm I'm going nuts. <laughs> well, that's that's the secret to being uh, 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 an ugly uh, orc vampire sculptor. Yeah, orc make vampire, little faces. Yeah. Make little faces in your work, yeah. Um, so yeah, details were exaggerated here, but the, the thing when you're sculpting, even for 3D print, is to know how big your final project is going to be in the real world. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, that's something that a lot of people in the beginning forget. Like they start sculpting. And you have to know, like, okay, how big is this going to be? Mm -hmm. And, like, my trick, when, when they always ask me, or I also think James, like, how many, uh, how, how much detail do you put into a print? And I, I'll tell them, like, okay, if you scale it down on your screen until the real-life size for in front of your eyes, and you see no more, let's say, of the fine details, then you're already working too small, you know? Mm -hmm. Like holding it up in front of you, like, and and that's in my, uh, um, let's say, career. That has always been a good um, measure thing, you know. I think there's something in front of you with scale, with the scale, yeah. your final scale. Like for for miniatures, I, I've got bases, so like, um, uh, I've got a thir a thirty, uh, a thirty, a forty, and a fifty millimeter base um, that I used, to, and and they're in front of me and. I've got that as reference, so I know that's my real-world reference, and it's really important to have that because you can you can check yourself with it, you know. Um, and I would, anyone that's just starting out with miniatures, especially, I'd highly recommend buying a few and having them in front of you while you're sculpting because it's really important to be able to gauge that, um, you know, level of scale. Yeah. So on this example, like I told you with the inflate brush, if you look closely on the cheek here. Are you guys seeing my mouse also? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So what I'm pointing at here is that's been done with the inflate brush. So I know if I inflate this edge, it will pick up more detail. Same thing for here, same thing for the lips, same thing for these angles. Uh, because I knew in the final product, like I wanted to paint this thing up uh, and gave it like an ancient weathered look. Mm -hmm. And like this is how it came out, you know? And the only thing that that this actually is, is like, this is the 3D print, pulled off the supports, uh, put some primer on it, and, and just, I've done a few uh, washes with, with some paints. Like, mm -hmm. this was a, this was a test, you know? I wanted to see like, hmm, how does this thing work out if I print it and paint it? Because, uh, yeah, it's just a thing to, to, to make stuff happen in the real world because we're living in a digital world all the time but once you have the chance or the opportunity to hold your own things in the world and, and show it to your to your parents for example yeah. <laughs> then they finally have a clue what you're doing <laughs> because it, they can hold an object and that's that's a big difference like it's it's a great thing to start a conversation with people when you actually have a physical thing on the table Martin if you could go Back in the past, you know, would you like to work on uh, Bram Stokes, uh, Bram Stokes Dracula movie? I would have loved working on that movie, but I w would have never uh, been able to make that concept because, like, there are a lot of influences of those things in my work, and and like, and it's the same. It's the same thing with everything that you see when you grow up. Like, yeah. W would you have loved working on that movie? Yeah, but the movie would have looked totally different. Different, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this because this this little shrunk uh, orcish vampire had uh, has reminded me. Uh, they, I think they had this great uh, vampire design. If you remember, I think this is the the scene. Uh, I'm not sure. I think maybe from a bedroom of that uh, uh, woman when this 
Wemper uh, comes in, in, into 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 to the yeah. camera upside down or something like that. Uh, it had like real, this really 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 sharp lines uh, on, mm. on his face, like really deep cuts, you know. Uh, and uh, this is what what his head reminds me of. Uh, <laughs> So I, 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 I mean, like you would definitely be uh, a, a good apprentice there, at least, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe on the on the sequel, you know. So really, you never know. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, now it's possible, you know, when you have like portfolio like this. Now it's like something to be expected, you know. So uh, to be invited on such project, you know. So have you been working for uh, for uh, for any movie? Uh, yeah, I've did some concepts for um, the last uh, 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 the the Crimes of Grunwald. Mm -hmm. I did I did a, a few small concepts for it, uh, nothing major, and I did a digital maquette for um, uh, Christopher Robin, like the Winnie the Pooh movie. Like they they had the two D designs uh, from uh, what's the artist's name? Um, damn. Yeah, it's a great artist, but the thing is, like, they had to translate those two D two D designs to three D objects to mm -hmm. to, and like in the past, like somebody in clay would do it, or sometimes if there's money and there's time, they still do it in clay. But most of the times, like people call me as a maquette sculptor because I can sculpt pretty fast and I can translate two D images also mm -hmm. pretty well for the director or the person that hires me. And um, those are the type of projects that I'm on. And currently, like, I'm on a project, but I can't say yeah, too course. much about it. But, but the thing is, like, they hired me to do the concepts. You deliver scops. You deliver high-res scops. You don't go into yeah. retopology no. re no. and stuff. Okay. No. No, but it's the same thing for the job that I'm now working on. Like, they hired me for the concept and also push it through the high set, uh, high-res assets mm -hmm. uh, in, in production. So, so what would be your, like, dream project? You know, if you could pick now, uh, expect except from for the things that you do for yourself, which is your favorite, obviously. But uh, like films, games, uh, are you into that any, at all? Um. Well, yeah, it, it's a, it's always a tough one because I say like I prefer to to if I have to choose I prefer to choose for films instead of games because games are are um, very contemporary contemporary mm -hmm. because they play it now and in two months maybe a few people are still playing it and and after a few years a few people remember it and nobody can play it again because they can't play it on the console so it, it disappears right yeah, yeah. and when you have a film or a movie like somehow it has a longer lifespan and if it's like a classic if you have the luck to create or work on a classic movie like something that <laughs> keeps living for a few decades like yeah. then i feel i think you left something behind or even or even working for for let's say products that become something in the physical world like even the stupid bottle or or a uh, uh, a statue there's a big chance that there will be still a piece of garbage left in hundred years that, that you created. <laughs> yeah. So, let, let, let's talk about uh, tools next to ZBrush. Like, are you, for example, do you only poly paint, uh, or do you use something like uh, Substance Painter, or do you do your like renders uh, uh, without any paint and then do it in a Photoshop, or what's the situation there? Well, the situation for me is very simple. Like I do poly paint and ZBrush, and then I kick it into KeyShot. Mm -hmm. And I love working with KeyShot because I have a certain workflow, and I don't tend to paint on my uh, sculptures because I want to preserve them. Because it happened in the past that somebody might be interested in printing it or producing it, and when you do paint over, and you have to adjust the paint over to the. Mm -hmm. uh, to the sculpt or uh, vice versa, mm -hmm. um, and then I just toss them in Photoshop to do a little color correction, a little bit of vignettes, some noise, but very straightforward and simple uh, post production. Okay, so I'll just mention a few guys here like, uh, uh, okay, Brett Briley and Stephen Oakley have been exchanging some love letters here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Franco Carle Carlesimo 
Uh, he's also one of the uh, fantastic sculptors of today, and also he'll be joining you at the mm. IFCC. Looking forward to me meeting split. him, actually. Great yeah. guy, very funny. Yeah. We, had, yeah. we had a good laugh uh, on Skype like a few weeks back. Uh, and uh, yeah, and few others here. Uh, so yeah, hello, hello everyone, and thanks for coming <laughs> back uh, after the <laughs> collapse of the system. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so w what are we seeing here, Martin? Uh, so this was also a pretty quick sculpt that I did. Uh, it was a lagoon creature that I wanted to design, and eventually uh, I also printed it out. Originally, it wasn't intended to do it, but this thing, like. Yeah, the sculpt. No, yeah, okay. So this is the sculpt. It's fairly simple, but by throwing it into Keyshot and putting some nice lighting and AGRs on it, you can make it really pop. Like, and when you add like all the little edges and details, like that's something that I think is important when you're sculpting something. If you add little rims and little uh, details, like for instance on 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 the scales. Like I know if I exaggerate certain small pieces and I put certain light on it that it will dro uh, drop an extra shadow or it will catch some more light to make it more um, is vivid. This, is this here only HDRI or is this? are there some additional uh, light sources for this render? Nope, this is uh, one HDRI. Uh, and it's actually also the background in this case. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's, it's like straight out of Keyshot, mm -hmm. did a color correction on it and that's it. Like no post-production for the rest on this. This is like, a, in your case, uh, this is like a two days job, right? One, one day. day. One day, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry for insulting you. <laughs> yeah, but I, I tell you what, how I became, uh, uh, let's say, a fast sculptor. Since I got my two little devils, my kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You <laughs> like my time, I realized like having kids is great, but you realize that your time is even more precious. Definitely. And that you have to work even faster for the little <laughs> spare time that you have, right? And that's actually the, the biggest motivation to, to ramp up my, my sculpting skills and become fast, you know? Yeah, I know. I, I totally understand. I have only one and it's like, uh, you know, Jesus, you know, like I can't even imagine if I would have twins or... Yeah, <laughs> So, if you're a slow sculptor, get some kits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that will soon buck your ideas up, yeah. Uh, this little piece uh, took longer, and it's all because of James, sadly enough. Um, <laughs> because he was telling me, like, yeah, add more detail, add more detail. And I was like, uh, uh, and like, it took me four or five days or something, like, tweaking, working on it. And I'm, I'm super happy with the detail that I was, let's say, uh, uh, that he kept kept pushing on, on me to to uh, just this frustration because like Marco, you should see the stuff this dude throws away. And I, when I say throw away, I mean delete. Like <laughs> this guy, it does this stuff and he's showing me. And this it, there was one. It was a really kick-ass mermaid sort of sculpture, and it was and it was wicked. And he's like, no, I don't like that. I'm going to delete it. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just deletes them. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So trying to encourage him to spend more time on stuff. And well, like... I have a solution for you, Martin. You just put it in a folder and publish it to Gumroad, you know, and then <laughs> <laughs> earn money on your trash, you know. <laughs> so, um, okay. I'm taking notes right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you should do that. Should, you should do that. Uh, uh, so let me ask you, like, what... Okay, l let's, let's talk about the stuff <laughs> that you... Sculpt from scratch, and the sculpt, then the stuff that you use, like uh, from the library, you know, ZBrush library, uh, and so on. Like, what are the things you don't want to waste your time on? Like, uh, uh, like, uh, would you use like uh, hands that are already done, and then just extrude them a bit, and, and that kind of stuff? Like, uh, uh, what is your what is your advice for saving time? You know, let's say it that way. Um, if you're working on a concept, everything's good to go. Mm -hmm. Like anything, like when you're working on a concept, right? Like people only uh, um, want you to work fast and, and want you to be uh, uh, that you're creative. And it, it, you would be crazy if you would lose half a day's time to sculpt some hands. So in that case, like use a base mesh, modify it, tweak it, cut it up, and and be smart with it. Like. Make mm -hmm. sure that, that people don't uh, uh, can smack you on the hands and say like, uh-uh, you stole it from here or there. No, be smart with, with those tools. 
but only in, in let's say the concepting phase because if you want something purely unique shape wise I would say start with a sphere and start uh, exploring shapes but that's all if you get if, if your client gives your time to do it you know if, if you watch the the, the, the sculpt off from the seabrush summit that yeah. that is a prime example of and it's almost concept because you, the people are working on an image. Uh, no one that the, the end end product is one image, a flat image from one angle. So you have to work. You've only got three hours, and you have to work very fast and very smart. Um, so there's no point in sculpting that piece of armor that's not going to be shown. Mm-hmm. Um, you just sculpt what's in front of you, and so you just have to work very smart. It's it. it uh, I think concepting. Firstly, you have to be very fast sculptor and understand form like martin but also you have to be very smart and about how you break your image down and what you do uh and what you actually sculpt um i guess less is more really isn't it martin yeah like the, the, don't dwell on, on small details that nobody will ever see exactly I mean, yeah yeah that's that's the big difference with 3d print right because mm. the 3d print Everybody sees every angle. Yeah, you, you've got so to. Then, yeah. then you have to make sure that everything. Yeah, okay. this was the question yeah. that I didn't want to uh, interrupt you with. Uh, Vera Gallo was asking like uh, about uh, James' work. Like, uh, mm. uh, is he satisfied uh, with just one angle? And I took no, this liberty no, yeah. to, to to answer to, to say like, if you're doing for collectibles, then it has to be perfect for. Yeah. It's got to be good from all angles, yeah. and this is actually the challenge if you've got a concept to follow. Um, that that's only one one from in two D in one angle. Um, sometimes you're lucky to get a flit a reverse view if you're working for a, a high profile client. But um, if you're working for smaller clients, they can normally only afford one concept. So and that's normally from the front. So um, you've got to be able to the same way. You've got to come up with a, a way of interpreting that concept from all angles. And what we find is that. Um, Put the pose for me. Well, what 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 I find is that the pose is the most difficult because that pose has got to work from all angles. You've got to have good weight distribution, good movement, a good gesture, and it's got to work on all of those angles. Um, so yeah, it's vastly different in some ways to concept because if you were to take a look at all of those sculpt off pieces from different angles, well, especially mine, <laughs> there was nothing on the back of mine at all. Nothing. Well, yeah, if it would seem my sculpt, if you yeah. would even turn it like two degrees, it will fall apart totally. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew like, okay, there's only one image that, that, that they need, right? From one angle. So yeah. you make sure that that one angle works. Mm. And and yeah, that's that's how you do the, <laughs> how do you, how do you do the trick. I, I, I remember there was a... I, there, there, this was like maybe four or five years ago and uh, I... I think I got some CD or something like that with uh, with tutorials. Uh, I think it, maybe it was even from Gnomon if, if they had some kind of uh, uh, bundled uh, tutorials in, a, in on a CD or whatnot. And I, I can't remember the author, but I was so amazed. The guy did amazing 3D uh, sculpt of uh, some woman with some clothes you know lying mm. uh, half naked and blah 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 perfectly painted uh, and then when i saw the process it, it, actually he was using he was using uh, 3d coat and z brush together i think mm. uh, but he got it so perfect just from one angle you know yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah as soon as he like rotated the camera like for five uh, <laughs> uh, five uh, p- uh, five uh, degrees, you know, uh, or more, you realize it's just <laughs> it looks like those like projection, sculpture tricks. Yeah. It's tricks, projection, you know? yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like a, a few... amazing, and you know? I was like, wow, you know, like. There were a few really good like super realistic portraits on Art Station a while back, and I was you look closely, and they're almost like a photo, but you can tell they're kind of three D, but then. When you look, it's actually they've actually projected like a photo onto a sphere and then displaced it. <laughs> uh, but, but but what this guy did, he is not yeah. not just the pro- projecting the details of the texture. He uh, he extru- he extruded it, flattened the elements, uh, 3D yeah. elements like sphere and uh, and others uh, to yeah. to perfectly match the, the angle. 
But when you rotate oh, well, it, it, you, you, yeah. you, you know, the woman turns into an octopus, you know, it's like, doesn't yeah, yeah. make any sense, you know. It's, <laughs> yeah. But it was amazing. So, what are we, what are we seeing? This is another 3D print test, or is this... This, this is actually um, the Rise Up Bust uh, that uh, I did for the group, like the uh, Grim group, and uh, like each of us has a, has a four and a half inch print, or casting, and a six inch bust. And this is yeah inspired on the Cthulhu thing uh, um, theme. So what I did was in the sculpt like add a little ship in the back, and like make the waves collapse until it's back. And then eventually, uh, Brett, our friend, printed printed it out, and we shipped it off to the caster. And what I'm holding in my hand is actually a casting that you can buy. Mm -hmm. But the great thing is like all the small details are still in there, and and like. I'm I'm also printing with Form 2 and like the the results that you get out of that desktop printer is like amazing. And once you figured out like how you can amplify certain things or make certain things sharper, like the sky is the limit. The only thing that's holding you is the building size. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it yeah. it's what some like 20 and something centimeters or 30. Um, in the height. Yeah, I'm just trying yeah, to in think. Height, yeah, in height, I think yeah. it's 20 and it's uh, 15 yeah. by 15 centimeters. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't have form, we have Moai here, which is like a low budget version of uh, form, uh, let's call it that way. Um, but it's still pretty, pretty, pretty good uh, for those who don't, who can't buy form uh, mm -hmm. printer. So Mo Moai is uh, another cool, they're not paying us to advertise them, so <laughs> <laughs> we just own one, one machine, so. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. So let's quickly see if there's something else print-wise. Ooh. Well, this is actually a piece that uh, James and I worked on. Um, and it was a fun project to work on uh, because we had a certain idea for the sculpt and then we just sculpted the parts he gave it to me. I sculpted the parts. So, gave so, it back so to him. James did the grave digger thief. Yes, guy, that's right. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And a lot of the uh, I did the the uh, surface, and I did the gravestone, and then Martin did the rest. Mm -hmm. um, What's the rest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, now you've opened the can of worms, Mark. Yeah, just kidding. Just kidding. Right? I did the art direction. <laughs> oh. oh god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you did the you did the wreath, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, did, did, was this a, a client work or is this no? It was it, it was self initiated. Mm -hmm. um, again, we did this one for Monster Palooza. Mm -hmm. Is this based um, on some story or no? It's our own. It, well, it, it, it's our own story. It's mm -hmm. a it's completely unique concept that we came up with together. Mm -hmm. um, so we literally. And and actually, this is what we'll we're going to be talking about some of this sort of stuff when we come over to see you guys in June mm -hmm. uh, about how we how we collaborate, how we um, think about making a statue like this, a large scale statue, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the, the, a little bit about the creative process that we had with it um, because I think that it's quite interesting for people. And it, of course, we'll be sharing some techniques and stuff, but um, I think. There's not a lot that's in the 3D. What we do, I don't think in, there's enough people talking about the creative process mm -hmm. that goes behind thinking up this sort of stuff. Um, so we're going to try and break that down as well. Um, uh, yeah, and, and also about storytelling, like telling yeah, little simple things, uh, like for instance, like this piece that I did. Like it's a it's it's a combination of a zero pilot, like. The, the Japanese fighter pilots mm -hmm. uh, from World War II, mm -hmm. combined with um, the Oz mythos. So you have the flying monkeys from the Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And like it's a hybrid version of those things, tr two things together. So you have like a kamikaze pilot that is a suicide flying monkey mm -hmm. thing going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you add like little symbols, like uh, the the chuba on on the sword, like. You can see it clearly in this image, like it reads like us, and and like right, you have, right. and you do your research, like you make sure that the suit that he's wearing is actually like a flight suit of those mm -hmm. type of pilots, mm -hmm. and and yeah, that's the thing that I also personally like to do, like 
do little things with storytelling while you're sculpting. How, how, and it do, doesn't you, have how to be did you obvious, decide no? about the uh, pose in this case? Uh, so, uh, were there any reference for that, uh, or did you already have it in your head? Um, I kind of had it already in my head, but the thing that I uh, I was looking for for a certain pose, but it started to work when I added the wings to it. Like the wings mm. were always uh, yeah. an original thing with the design, but mm. when I angled up the the arms with the wings, and and then it started like working from all angles, and and also like sometimes I showed it to somebody and said like, okay, what do you think from this angle? And so like, okay, maybe you tr should tweak it like a few degrees like this, and then like because I think even when you're doing personal work, you have to be open uh, for feedback of other people that you trust, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. And you hope that the people that you trust are, let's say, honest in their feedback. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they don't, don't want to sabotage you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's tempting to say you should be upside down doing a handstand or something. But, I mean, uh, but the, the, the wings will save, save the situation even if the pose uh, uh, isn't good from the st like st yeah, static yeah. point of view. Like, uh, uh, you can always say, yeah, but he's almost flying, you know, so yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah, amazing. And this was printed for uh, um, for us in um, at the summit, actually. Oh, um, really? uh, yeah, J Jake, Jake from Form Labs uh, was very kind to print it for us, along with one of my pieces. So it was on display. Yeah, the um, images here are still a test print. I have better or a higher. So, what, like, of course, like wings are separated pieces. Uh, I guess uh, the, the 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 stone and the base. Uh, this is the. Uh, they are the one piece, right? Or yeah. So in this case, the stone and uh, the um, floor are one piece. The legs are separate. The arms are separate. Mm -hmm. The sword is separate. The basket is separate. The head is separate, and the wings are separate. Mm -hmm. And also the little um, scabbards and the gun and the tail and the sword. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So roughly 12, 12 pieces, I think. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Lots of pieces. So, if we would like, you know, w want to see this in uh, as as a as a product, you know, like mm. something as a, as a as a resin kit, you know. So, uh, what are the implications and complications of, of, of <laughs> such product? Like, can you can you just like say a few words about this? Because I know many 3D artists are like thinking about doing uh, that kind of stuff, but uh, yeah. aren't fully aware of the of the of the process and uh, you know like uh, all, all all the problems that needs to be solved. Uh, mm. well, I'll tell you the easy part. That's sculpting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the yes, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, James. Well, yeah, I think exactly. Um, so, actually, overar uh, overarchingly, it's about contacts. Like, you've got to have... Firstly, you've got to be able to print it. That can be very, very expensive. Um, we get around that by having our own printers, but that in itself is can be expensive because you've got to buy at least three grand's worth of... possibly more, four grand's worth of printer. Um and then, of course, you've got to buy, you've got to maintain that, and then you've, you've got to have all the, buy all the resin. And then, actually, it's not just a case of whacking it in the printer and getting it to work. It, it, it requires a bit of knowledge as well to get a good print. Um, and it's a constant battle with um, orientation, supports, all that sort of stuff. After you've done that, then you need to go to a caster. Um, and, again, that's a craft in itself. Uh, and the casting quality will vary as will the skill of the caster. So getting a good caster is like gold dust. And as we all know, you don't get something for free in life. So the more, the better they are, <laughs> not, the more not, expensive not, they are. Not even in China anymore. Not <laughs> even in China. I mean, there are there are services like Onage is the most popular one. So I think as far as I'm aware, you, they're I'll, an I'll only one the two, service. I'll send 200 euros bill to them as well for promoting <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, as, I think there's a few out there, um, yeah. but but um, they the, the all-in-one services that will print stuff out for you, cast it. But of course, that's very expensive. So I think it's very common for people to do pre-orders. I want to um, know. I want to know what printer they use. It's fair. I I I don't. I used to know, and I can't I can't quite remember. <laughs> you suddenly it's a, forgot. Really, yeah, it's 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 a really expensive one, isn't it, Martin? It's like crazy, like um, yeah, I, I bet. Yeah, 
I bet. Yeah. Well, I think I think the the the, the let's say the technique is the same as, as as the cheaper printers, but they have just a bigger uh, building area and everything. I think it's like, a supportless process as well, actually. Yeah, but exactly. I, could be I think it's something oh. uh, that's happening inside the liquid uh, uh, and the, or the some kind of uh, dust or whatever material is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. it, 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 I, I don't think they they're dealing with all the supports that <coughs> we're dealing with desktop printers uh, but anyway they're doing a really really amazing job so, uh, I mean I've seen like uh, like 90% of the guys uh, who do figurines uh, who are popular artists uh, are in contact with, with with those guys so yeah they're doing yeah. the good job so it's I think it's fair to, to even to promote them <laughs> Like, I think the uh, the interesting dynamic that's going on at the moment is it's now more expensive to buy stuff from China. Yeah. So yeah. especially yeah. if you're in the states. So mm-hmm. it, what's it, what's going to be interesting in the future if that trend continues is that um, you're going to start see ser- seeing services, more services pop up in Europe. I mean, it, you, there are you, there are services in in in, in the UK that well, what, do miniatures, but not larger scale stuff. Well, what I would uh, suppose, um, that are common. What I would suggest to guys like you and uh, others, uh, if 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 you plan to you know like uh, make money out of uh, collectibles and and that mm. kind of stuff, then uh, you should go to the Asian fairs, you know, because mm. uh, yeah. th- this is where where that thing is big, you know, and mm. uh, and I think that you know they would like to see some of the Westerners uh, exhibiting at, at their shows, you know. Mm. Uh, because uh, it's it's a huge market there, you know. Like mm. uh, there's no way you could sell I- enough copies. I-, I mean, that amount of copies in in the European Union, for for example, mm. you know. So uh, I think, of course, states always, uh, but uh, Asian Asian fairs are like really interesting place to go. I've seen a lot mm. of footage about it. I'm in contact with artists who exhibit there, Asian artists, you know. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's a it's a bit different story there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Do, is there anything left we didn't cover? Uh, um, no, I think unless Martin's got more sculpting <laughs> that he wants to do. <laughs> Martin, have you found uh, some of uh, among hundreds of your works uh, some that we didn't see? Uh, uh, <laughs> wait, let's see. It stopped somewhere. Wait. Oh, falling asleep. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! Like. Where, where does this list end? <laughs> Here. You're, you're really productive. Uh, yeah, I used to be more productive, but yeah. It's terrible because I, I spend like two, th- you know, like weeks and weeks on one piece, and he's done like five or six in the same space of time. Yeah, but it it's, re- not, it's not like you don't have anything in your portfolio, James. Like no, no, uh, no. But uh, it just yeah, it just. It puts the wind up for you when someone. <laughs> well, but but that's that's let's say sometimes that's a good thing on being a freelancer is that you can kind of schedule your own agenda and and you can also make time for yourself mm. if it's not totally filled up of course. Um, but that's how I actually chose to be a freelancer. Like I wanted mm. to work for myself for a few days every month, like the guarantee mm. that I could do my own yeah. work, and and then do client work of course. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and it happened in the past that I declined client work because I really wanted to make something. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that at least for this session, you know, uh, <laughs> we've come close to an end. Uh, <laughs> I'll definitely. Uh, I'm very interested in seeing you guys as well as and uh, some type of uh, of uh, our online instructors for the IFCC Academy website. Uh, this is something that I'm, you know, like negotiating with uh, uh, other artists as well. So uh, we'll see if this might happen in the future. Uh, mm-hmm. if, even even if so, uh, some kind of a group. Uh, 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 group of instructors for uh, for for a certain uh, uh, program that we could think of you know like uh, <laughs> maybe even doing this kind of live sessions uh, so yeah and also of course we'll meet soon at the IFCC in, uh, yeah. in June and yeah. I hope this will be like uh, I, it, this is a bit different concept for us this year but we'll see I hope it will work well uh, as uh, as it w- as it did in the part the biggest difference now is uh, instead of 60 
speakers that we had like every year. Mm -hmm. This year, it's more like 25 instructors and demo artists. So sessions will be longer, you know, mm -hmm. there will be less of them. Uh, but I believe that uh, in the end, uh, the guests will uh, leave the conference with much more knowledge. So, yeah, thanks thanks a lot for joining me uh, today. No, you're welcome. Uh, I hope we'll be in touch. I, mean, I know that we'll be in touch uh, tomorrow, <laughs> of course, uh, mm -hmm. uh, again. But uh, for, for others here, expect more sessions like this with with other IFCC instructors, but also other artists around the globe. So, yeah, that's it. Cool. Thanks, okay. everyone. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. 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 Guys. Cheers.